Hey, Steve Sretzky here. As always, Canadian real estate market update with particular focus on Vancouver. If you can't sort of value anything out of these videos, all I ask you hit thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, I just got back from the Looney Hour live event at the Hockey Hall of Fame. So thank you so much for coming out and supporting that. Highly encourage you guys to go check out the, uh, it is now up on YouTube. But we'll also talk about this week. We've got some uh, sales figures on Vancouver and, and the GTA. We've got some U.S. sales figures that I think are important. We've got commentary from central banks. We've got a Bank of Canada rate hike announcement coming up next week. So gave me my commentary on that. Mortgage rates, uh, bond yields moving. Lots happening in financial markets as we go into December and getting closer to rounding out this year. But wanted to provide you guys a little bit of context on what I'm seeing in the ground here in the Vancouver housing market, you know, where I run a business on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it continues to be the same story, which is very, very weak sales volumes. You know, we're running at historically low levels. But the big story here is I, I think inventory. It continues to be rather benign. You don't have this big flood of people panicking and dumping their housing on the market and, or foreclosing. We don't have any of that. Okay. It's not prevalent. I think it's maybe still too soon, but if you're looking for that big inventory dump, we certainly have, haven't had it. And as you always get into these seasonal times of the year, yeah, you know, end of November into December and into January, you're really not going to have a lot of inventory. So in terms of figuring out, you know, price discovery, I don't think you're going to have a lot of transactions over the next you know, six to eight weeks. So keep that in mind um, as we sort of progress here forward. But the real big story is that sellers continue to sort of hold out. Everyone's just waiting for the, for a better price. Everybody's so set on, you know, what their neighbor sold for four or five months ago. And so it's this constant grind. You have this the, the bid ask spread between buyers and sellers is massive right now. And so the kind of the running joke in the realtor industry right now is like, you're actually better off to be second realtor in as the listing agent, i.e., the first guy needs to go in um, and deal with a, a bunch of sellers that have unrealistically high expectations, beat them up a bit, um, and then ultimately get fired, lose the listing, and the next guy goes in and actually gets a realistic price and sells it four weeks later. That's that's kind of the story right now because what you're seeing is like sellers are getting these offers that are coming in. You know, the first offer that comes in for the buyer, you go, oh, no, that's too low. And then they sit on the market for, you know, another six, seven weeks. They reduce their price slowly and end up selling for exactly what they were offered, you know, six or seven weeks ago. So it takes time. Sellers are really, really reluctant right now. So that's kind of the big driver is just this really just the, the bid ask spread being so wide uh, that it is, is, is a lot more challenging to get deals done and takes, you know, I think two good negotiators on both ends to get things done. And so I think that's where you're going to sort of weed out a lot of the competition, uh, people that aren't skilled enough to get deals done. But, you know, we look at Greater Vancouver Home Sales, you're seeing that in the data. I mean, Greater Vancouver Home Sales down 53% on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, outside of 2018, remember 2018, we had an 18-year low in annual home sales that year. So November 2018 and November 2008, those are the only two worst years outside of this year. So November 2022, basically, it was the third slowest November in 22 years. So just to give you some context, these, this is definitely, you know, bear market levels of housing activity. Um, we The home price index finally fell uh, on a year-over-year -year basis in November, I think down 1.7% year-over-year. So again, rate of change, understanding rate of change is extremely important. We've talked about it on the show before. Uh, seeing similar things in the GTA, you guys know I've talked about it before, the GTA, in my opinion, is a market that is getting hit harder than Greater Vancouver. Um, GTA home sales down 54% year over year. Um, lowest home sales for the month of November since 2008. Again, you know, you're looking at the two largest housing markets in Canada, really running at you know decade, multi-decade lows in sales activity. So, and it's not just you know again, it's, this is not just Canada when rates go up. Uh, you know, 400 basis points in a highly levered asset, an asset that, you know, derives a lot of economic value, which is, you know, it's, it's most households largest asset. Uh, it, it is, a, it definitely plays a factor into the wealth effect. When your house goes up, you have more money to, you feel, you feel wealthier, you tap into that money to go spend. Um, and so, and you actually have the ability to tap into it through a refinance or through a home equity line of credit. So, uh, as again, as the largest asset prices, largest assets, 
fall in value, they get repriced, and your interest rates are so punitively high that you don't have this ability to basically tap into it for spending. Obviously, it's going to start pulling on different parts of the economy. And we can see this the same thing happening in the U.S. Uh, U.S. pending home sales down 40, 40 percent on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, the steepest decline on record uh, dating back to when this index was created. So, guys, this, there's, there's a lot happening uh, behind the scenes in these markets. But now we have to sort of ask ourselves, well, where, where is the most vulnerability? You know, we've got talking about Bank of Canada rate hike coming up here next week, December the 7th. Uh, you know, we look at it and say, okay, well, you know, there's a great chart here that the OECD put out that uh, basically shows the share of new mortgage borrowers going on these sort of adjustable rates. And you can see that Canada is obviously one of the larger offenders. I think this is over the past year or two, uh, because if you look at, to it's not total outstanding mortgages in Canada, but it's not 50, over 50% variable. Um, it's, it's somewhere around the 30%, 35% mark. So it's actually lower than that. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what the OECD is pulling out, but the, the story remains that, you know, if you look at the U.S., the most common mortgages there, they don't really have these floating rates as they typically lock in for 15 or 30 years at one rate, right? So, I mean, if you took out a mortgage in the U.S. and you locked in, you know, a 3% rate for the next 30 years, it's probably going to be potentially the trade of some people's lifetimes. Um, so, you know, you have to keep that in mind. But so the Bank of Canada, uh, I think the markets are pricing in, I believe it's 25 basis points. Uh, at this December meeting here. That's kind of my my opinion. I think it's 25 and done. Again, the market is still pricing in, um, I believe, another 50 to 75 basis points of rate hikes before they peak and they actually end up market again is pricing and rate cuts towards the end of 2023. Uh, I think my personal opinion, uh, feel free to come back on this comment and this channel, make fun of me, you know, three, four, five months from now, I think December is 25 and done. Uh, if they do get 50, it's 50 and done. I think that, that you know, we're, we're I mean, the damage is done. We, we can see it in the numbers, the steepest house price correction, uh, the national house price index down 15%. Uh, since it peaked earlier this year, that's the steepest correction on record, nearly double the previous decline in 2008, 2009. Uh, you're seeing some sectors uh, in these, some of these suburban markets down 20, 25%. And I think there's still room to go. So you'll see some of these suburban markets that end up falling 30, 35, 40%. Um, the damage I think is already done. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at next. Uh, one thing to kind of sort of keep in mind here, a um, couple more interesting mortgage data numbers uh, from CIBC Capital Markets. Uh, overall mortgage originations in Canada are down. Uh, they've fallen about 30% on a year-over-year -year basis. So that's mortgage originations across Canada down about 30%. Um, and, uh, you know, per, per uh, CIBC, again, Capital Markets, that uh, one-third, one-third of investors are, are, were in negative cash flow territory, negative cash flow territory, one third of investors pre pandemic. So you can imagine if you were an investor and you were negative cash flow, one third of them pre pandemic, that uh, all of a sudden when you get a 400 basis point move in mortgage rates. Again, whether you floated or maybe you fixed, maybe you had a fixed rate, maybe you went on to go to two year, three year, four year fixed rate, and that's now coming up for renewal in the next you know, six, eight, 10, 12 months. Um, I just think that the pain is there. We, we are in this market where like the typically longest duration you take, right? It's a five-year fixed mortgage. And so the rate sensitivity in Canada, you also have to factor in that household debt to GDP is at about 110%, where it's about 80% in the U.S. Because the U.S., of course, went through that painful deleveraging in 08, 09, whereas Canada did not. So, you, you know, everyone's just so focused in Canada and looking at the Fed and saying, well, hey, the Fed's going to keep going. You know, did you see the, the jobs market report here today? It was, you know, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, the Fed's going to keep going. They're going to get the terminal rate up another 100 basis points. And while that may be true, it doesn't mean that the Bank of Canada has to follow. And yeah, I know people get worried about you know currency movements, but listen, Canada is going to be done. The RBA in Australia is going to be done. I think New Zealand's getting closer to tapping out. Countries like South Korea, all these, all these uh, you know economies with highly levered, highly uh, indebted 
uh, households are, are just going to have to tap out before the Fed. And, you know, we can see already, again, I think Japan's a clear indicator, I think in the East, in the Eurozone as well. Um, you know, they just don't have the same flexibility as the U.S. does. So uh, one thing that look at, if you want to look at a little bit of easing in financial conditions, so while the Bank of Canada will raise rates at their next meeting coming up, is that you're already seeing movements in the fixed mortgage rate side. So fixed mortgage rates were down about 15, 20 basis points last week. That's because your Canada five-year bond yield is back down to 3%. So we've dropped about 80, 85 basis points in the last four weeks. That's the bond market, again, sniffing out, obviously, weaker growth, the recession ahead, uh, where we've seen that volatility really all year jumping around. So it seems to me like the, on the fixed mortgage rate side, again, we've probably peaked out. I mean, an 80 basis point move in four weeks is huge. Um, and so that could get sub three in the weeks ahead. And so despite what the Bank of Canada does, your variable rate will go up, but your fixed fixed rates maybe could, could hover here in the low fives. So... Uh, that's kind of what we're watching this week. Uh, I think we're watching the Bank of Canada rate hike announcement coming up as everybody in the country is going to be uh, December the 7th. So we'll have more coverage for you guys next week. Hope that helped. See you then.